Hi everyone, happy Wednesday. We will wait just a few minutes before we get started. If you're joining, say hi, let us know where you're watching from. Hi, Carol. Here they come, Crystal and Leanne. Harley. Hey, Lori. Hi, Donna. All right, guys, we've got a good little group here, so we're going to go ahead and get started. We have a special guest with us today. Chance is with us from Silver Lining Herbs, and he's going to talk with us about making your horse's environment less conducive for parasites and uh, while supporting their digestive system as well. We will also be talking about the herbal wormer. So put any questions you have in the comments or just tell us hello. Um, at the end of the segment, one lucky viewer is going to win a 60-day supply. So get those questions in there. You have them. And with that chance, we're going to turn it over to you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for having me. So to get started, you know, like the biggest thing I want to talk about today is just that there's alternatives to synthetic deworming. You know, growing up, I didn't know that that was, was an option. And so, you know, we always used to do the the paste deworming and and now knowing what i know now I'm, I'm glad to know that there is an alternative out there to to that and i can think about a particular horse that i that i had I, we still have him actually he's 27 this year at our our house and uh, growing up as a kid he he did not like the you know the the synthetic dewormer paste because we'd have to actually pinch him between these two panels and put a post on his back legs like a makeshift stock right and then we'd kind of like snub him up a little bit and give it to him and so we're like holy heck like you know we don't like to give it to him and he don't like to get it we wish we knew of an alternative so uh now now i do and and uh you know the the herbal warmer that we have from silver lining herbs does such a great uh service for for horses on a control side of things but also just a better delivery method for for the horse too because it is a top dressing on on the feed it's a it's a powdered form where we can just give it um on the grain we add a little bit of uh water to it or our hemp seed coconut oil and then give it to them for 10 consecutive days whenever we need to deworm and it's it's much more pleasant for everyone so um the, the cool thing also about herbal deworming is considering the different species of parasites that we're trying to control. And, and the, the way that we look at deworming is really, um, it, it's not species specific. We're not trying to get strong giles or tapeworms or pinworms or something specific. What we're trying to do is make it a non-conducive environment for all uh, worms, parasites, and protozoa. So they simply want to leave the body on their own. And the way that we, we do that is with some key herbs that are very great at being anti-protozoal, things like clove and wormwood that are known to, to help um, evacuate these species out of the, the body. But beyond that, we're doing a lot of digestive support for um, their digestive tract as well. So we have herbs in there like slippery elm and, and psyllium um, that are great uh, mucilagins. So you get a lot of benefits on that side of things to help heal up any like wormholes or pathways or anything like that, the, any destruction that could be, could be there. So sometimes when I describe that to people, it's like hard to absorb what that means. 
exactly. And so like this analogy is probably the best way to describe it. So say that we had a junk pile full of um, trash and there were some rats and mice in there. Now we wouldn't go in there and just get rid of the rats or just get rid of the mice because they'd keep coming back to the junk pile. But the better alternative for that is to actually just get rid of the junk pile. And when we get rid of the junk pile, the rats and mice will leave on, on their own. And the, the part about that that I really like is how the evacuation process works. Now, there is some killing that's happening there, but most of this is actually leaving alive out of the, the back end of the, the horse. But rest assured, like, like these parasites, these worms can't survive on the outside environment um, for very long. So they soon, soon die when they're not inside the, the host animal. But the reason I like that is because I learned the hard way um, in college. We, we got a uh, colt that was was infested and we did an aggressive dewormer to that, that horse, did a big um, kill of the parasite load. Well, that horse ended up impacting and, and dying from, from that. And so I was like, again, here we are, like there's got to be a better option. So that's really silver lining herbs, herbal wormer is that, that better option in that case. The reason why we say 10 consecutive days is because we're trying to interrupt the egg laying cycle. It's known that um, that is a seven to 14 day process. So if we can interrupt that. We do the best job of, of cleaning them up. And just like any other deworming practice, we're, we're really suggesting, you know, two to four times a year. If you're in a cold climate, two times a year is typically sufficient. If you're a warmer climate, climate four times a year is typically sufficient. But it really depends on your horse and the environment, your manure management, all those kind of things. We have lots of customers that do monthly with great success. Um, and for me at my house, you know what we always say, let's ask the horse, let's see what they say, and we're going to give it, give them what they need when they need it. So um, depending on the type of winter we have and things like that. So here in Idaho, we had a really tough, tough winter lots of moisture. And so it's more appropriate to do it a little bit more frequent this year. Other years where it's drier, um, like in the past years with drought, um, we might not have to have needed to do it as much. It's also important, obviously, to look for symptoms of, of parasites. So that horse that's itching his tail head on the, on the fence, or um, you actually see uh, worms in the, the manure, um, pot belly look, things like that are good uh indicators symptoms to be giving your horse um, a deworming treatment the other thing that's a little unique about silver lining yeah. herbs is when you go on our website and, and see blogs and things like that we'll oftentimes refer to a full moon cycle so we believe and know that worms and parasites follow the lunar cycle and they're actually more active prior to the full moon that's this is actually when they're detaching from the intestinal lining and uh and ovulating and so it just makes sense to that's when you should deworm so um 10 days prior to a full moon we suggest starting our herbal warmer that's actually today is actually the perfect time to to start it um so that way we can interrupt that egg laying cycle while they're most active to evacuate them the best out of the the body now you don't have to get like obsessed about the, the lunar cycle. Some people definitely do, but you don't have to. Um, if you need a deworm, go ahead and deworm. I, you know, it, like if you ordered the herbal wormer today from Valley Vet um, and got it, you know, by Saturday or Monday, go ahead and start it then. Like you're going to have lots of success. But traditionally, you do have more success ten days prior to to the full moon cycle, and uh, it just it's just super easy. It's it's. Uh, not invasive for the horse it's not species specific it's healthy for the digestive tract and uh, all together a really good good option for for your horse okay. we had a question from tracy she said <clears throat> is it effective against insisted parasites especially strongyles yeah it definitely is you know like going back to not species specific you know the specific herbs that have been used for for millennia you know, uh, the clove, the wormwood, they're super effective being antiparasitic to evacuate those out of the body. And like I said, like there will be some killing that's that's going on. And then the great thing, too, is the other digestive herbs that are in the herbal warmer. That's going to be helping repair any damage that, that might have been caused there. Uh, and specifically like um, the, the wormholes, inflammation caused um, damage to the little cilia, uh, anything like like that. 
All right, Tracy had a question and it's what is the dose for horses and minis? Yeah, so, yeah, so the, the package that uh, they held up at the beginning of, of the call here, that, that's 60 servings. So that's actually six treatments. And there's a tablespoon scoop in there. And we suggest that one tablespoon for a thousand pound horse. So I would just adjust that to your weight. So if you had a 500 pound horse, I'd be giving uh, a half a tablespoon. If I was had a 1500 pound horse, I'd be giving one and a half tablespoons of the, the herbal warmer. Lots of people have tried it and like it. Okay. Does it do anything for bot larvae? Yeah. So the, the thing about, you know, bot flies, you know, it's not going to disrupt the, the fly from laying the eggs on your horse's uh, legs and stinging your horse on, on the nose, but it will absolutely help get that evacuated out of, out of the body. And, and so like we still suggest, uh, like scraping off the, the eggs off the leg. So, you know, we can eliminate um, the, the ingestion of the, the eggs. However, it will definitely help evacuate that out of the body. Cause that man, that those bot flies, they're gnarly. They'll, they'll uh, do some damage to the digestive tract. Um, Wanda ask, is it safe for pregnant mares? Yeah. So we have a pregnant mare at our house right now. We've used it on her for, for years and, and uh, have had a lot of success. So I'd be totally fine giving that to a, a mare that's in, in full. Okay. Carol asked, whoops, that jumped off the screen. Mm -hmm. Carol asked, is it safe for dogs and birds who eat the horse? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we get customer calls like this all the time and they're like, oh my gosh, like I dewormed my horse, my uh, dog got into the manure, ate the manure and had secondary poisoning from it. And I mean, like, holy heck, that's terrible. Right. So that's a great thing about these, these herbs that, that they, they don't do that. Um, they, they aren't going to have those side effects for, <clears throat> so, you know, we're a member of the national animal supplement council. We, re we record all potential adverse events and we've been in business for 24 years and have never had a secondary, um, issue with something like that with a bird or, or a dog, and, and that's definitely peace of mind in that situation. Um, Lori asked, how do you know it, it's worked? Do you fecal test them before and after treatment? Yeah, great question. So yeah, you know, that's a great way to, to do it is to do a, a fecal test. Um, you know, uh, we've done a fecal test at my house out of curiosity just to see, but you know, really if it's those symptoms that you see in a a horse like the pot belly, the itching of the, the rear end on the, the fence and, and see those symptoms go away, see that body condition increase. Um, but yeah, you can absolutely do a, do a fecal test before and after to see that, that snapshot. You know, the one thing to know about, about fecal tests is to delay that fecal test after the 10 days. I want to do it right on day 11 for instance, because what we're trying to do is evacuate that out of the, the body. And the way we're doing that is, is some of that will still be live and vi viable as it's leaving. So, uh, but that's the whole point of it is to get it out of the body, right? So um, I, I usually tell customers like, let's delay it like a week after the deworming has been, been complete to have a better understanding of, of what the results really look like. Okay. Um, Christina asked, can this be added to mash? Does it lose its effectiveness in water? No, not at all. I mean, that's, that'd be a great way to, to give it, you know, it is a powdered herb. So like, yeah, I'd want to feed that right away. I wouldn't want it just to sit in that mash and, you know, have potential mold happen or something like that, but that works out great. You know, the other thing you can do too, like some people will say like, you know, I don't grain my horses or anything like that. The great thing about this powdered blend is you can just add water to it and make a slurry out of it and give it in a, in a syringe and give it to them orally like you would on a synthetic synthetic dewormer. Um, so there's lots of different ways to, to give this that, that works really good to get your horses to consume it. Um, how long does one dose last? Can you go over the dosage again? Yeah, so the the one pound package that uh, Valley Vet carries, that's six treatments. So that's that's 10, ten day um, for 10 consecutive days. So we get 
one dose a day for 10 days and that's six treatments in that that package so um this this product also has a really good shelf life so you're looking at about a two to three year shelf life on that before it starts to lose some potency um so if you had two horses on that one package you'd have three treatments um for for your two horses or if you had six horses that'd be we one treatment right in that one single bag so that makes it super easy do you recommend continuing to remove the bot eggs? Yeah, I do. You know, like I, I, I always try to be proactive and, and uh, you know, having my horses be subjected to, to that. You know, it's kind of like manure management as well. You know, I have a lot of confidence in our herbal warmer, but I want to make sure that we're not having a conducive environment for the parasites to be around. So good manure management, scraping off the bot eggs, all those things are good practices in order to ensure less um subjection to having a parasite load is always a good thing glory ask again about the fecal test should you fecal test before and after i'm not sure if she was on before or not yeah so i think you know fecal testing is a great uh opportunity to see the results that that you have and have a good understanding of, of where your horse is at you know depending on your age of your horse um, conditions that your horse is in. Um, you could have, you know, a three-year-old that that's a very high shedder. You could have an aged horse that's a very low shedder. And so it's a good uh, option to, to know where you're, you're at. If you do do a fecal test after you've used the herbal warmer, we do recommend about a week after the completion of the treatment because we're evacuating parasites out of the body. And so we've had customers that, you know, might have like a 500 um count on you know before the deworming and they do a fecal count on day 10 and they're like 700 like what's going on well, we're evacuating them out of the body and that's what the product's designed to do is get them out so if we wait about a week after the completion of the treatment then you'll have a better idea of a true understanding of, of the results that you've seen with the, the herbal warmer um any contradictions with any medications no, not at all. I mean, it's super safe. I, like if you're giving other supplements or medications or anything like that, just add it to it. You know, the, the one thing that I always do promote though, like as far as with, with grains is a, a good idea is to stay away from like your processed feeds and your sweet feeds. So that's, that creates acidity, disease in the environment. So like those sugary feeds that have molasses in it, that's just going to create a conducive environment for, for viruses, bacteria, funguses, um, parasites and things like that. So it's great to stay away from those things that, that even benefits your horse even more for longevity, vitality, and uh, making sure that they don't have a, that conducive environment inside their digestive tract. Um, is this product um, specific for horses only? And can you give it too often and cause damage? No, you know, like, like we believe in giving them what they need when they need it. And so if, if that's something that your horse needs it on a monthly basis, I would say absolutely go for it. You know, we have lots of people that actually use this very consistently, um, like daily, like if they have an EPM horse, for instance, or something like that, that uh, they need to do it more, more longstanding. So that's t totally all right. And, and uh, would be very appropriate. Um, but, uh, you know, whatever your, your situation is typically colder climates, we recommend twice a year, warmer climates, we recommend four times a year, but weather's change, um, stages of life change, that determines we might need to do it more frequent or less frequent. So it's really on the individual. And if it helps you be more c confident in when to deworm, a fecal test is super appropriate for that. Okay. Uh, Charlene, this is available at Valley Vet Supply, so you can go online and get it through us. Um, does this wormer work on chemical dewormer resistant worms, horses, fields? Yeah, so that's what's happening, right? So we, we've dewormed with a chemical dewormer for so long, they start to see resistance happen. And that's really the, the object of, of this. You know, we have an analogy that, that says, like, if you had a junk pile full of rats and mice, you want to go there and kill the rats and mice because they keep coming back to that junk pile. 
Now you're not going to stop the life cycle of a parasite or anything like that. Like they, they're going to come through your horse. The object is just to keep them moving out the horse and not set up camp. So what the herbal wormer is designed to do is not get rid of the right rats and rats and mice, but rather get rid of the junk pile. So they'll uh, not have that hospitable environment to, to set up camp and uh, you know, thrive in, in that environment. And so your, your, parasites that are being resistant to other dewormers. Um, we, we don't see that on our side of things. Okay. Any negative effects on a horse with seasonal allergies or heaves? No, not, not at all. I mean, and having a healthier digestive tract is going to help those, those issues out as well. Valley Vet also carries a, a couple other of our products, uh, quite a few of our products, probably roughly 20, 20 different products of, of ours that, that would benefit their um, specifically for allergies, um, at the root of that, that issue is a, a liver condition. Uh, the liver has to filter everything that goes in or on your horse's body. It's responsible for the histamine production. So if you're have, seeing that si uh, seasonal discomfort in your horse, we need to support their liver. Um, that's going to help cleanse it, purge any excess out of there and help nourish it. So that way it can function normally. So that'd be a great, great thing for, for your horse there. Also, liver um, issues is also really con um, closely connected to heaves, so that could help clear that up as well. But also, Valley Vet does carry our respiratory support. That would be a huge value for your, your heavey horse. Um, what happens if something happens and you miss a couple days in a row in the middle of a treatment? Yeah, don't get don't get upset about it. You can't go back, <laughs> you know. So just just continue the the process. If it, if it's one day. Um, you know, give the additional dosage on the 11th day that that's totally fine. Um, you know, I, I don't worry, worry overly about that. Now, if you miss like three or four days, I'd go ahead and start the process back over again. But if you just miss one random day amongst that 10 days, just don't sweat it. Just give that uh, additional dose on the, the back end of the, the treatment. Okay. Tracy is asking about cost. Can you go over the cost of, um, what a bag costs and maybe what a treatment costs. Yeah, so the, the, the package there is uh, $60 uh, for that. So you're getting that six treatments for, for $60. Uh, so that's a $10 a, a treatment. So really comparable to other dewormers on the, the market. So um, I always think about like, mm -hmm. like for me personally and, and my family, my horses, my dogs, if I got an opportunity to choose, uh, something that's chemical or synthetic, or I have something that's, uh, alternative, that's natural and, and healthier, and they're both effective, I'm going to go with the natural version every single, single time, because, you know, even those chemical dewormers, warmers, they'll say, you know, wear gloves and, and different things like that. Don't get on your skin. And I'm like, I'm putting this in my horse's mouth. Why the heck would I worry about it being on my skin? That's a, that's a little concerning, right? So um, it just makes sense to, to go this, this route. And, and when you realize the effectiveness of herbs and, and realize that herbs are the purest forms of vitamins and minerals of the easiest to simulate the cellular level. And so they have lots of nutritional value to them, but the functionality that they provide as well. So like, if you look at the herbs on this one, like you see like slippery elm in there, if you've ever experienced slippery elm herb, it becomes like a mucilogen and it, it really helps, um, lubricate the digestive tract to make it easier to pass things out. So like when we're talking about risk of impaction or anything like that, the, that evacuation process, that's key in there. And then um, clove and wormwood and chaparral, garlic, all those different herbs that are, are in there. Great antiparasitic herbs that, that can do a great, great service for your horse. Okay, this one's from Tammy. Does the herbal dewormer take care of all parasites and should you do it monthly in the summer months? Yeah, it really depends on your, on your horse, Tammy. Uh, it does. It's not species specific. So I'd have confidence in, in that realm, depending on the situation with your individual horse. It could totally be appropriate to give monthly, but typically um, in the colder climates, give it twice a month. In the warmer climates, give it four times a month. But everyone's an individual. You might have 10 horses on your property and four of them need it uh, traditionally regular cycle uh, schedule where the other ones might need it a, a little bit more custom for them. Um, one practice I do have my, at my house, if one horse is looking like they do have a parasite, love, 
I go ahead and deworm everybody just to make sure that I'm managing it properly on, on my side of things. Um, Nicole asks, what is the benefits of horses with EPM? You mentioned longer treatment or daily. Yeah, so this is a great combination to help eliminate that protozoa out of the body. We actually do have a uh, EPM specific combination that Valley Vet um, Supply carries called EP minus, and that's the ideal product for an EPM horse. It does have the, the same herbs in it for the parasite uh, elimination, but it also has great immune enhancing herbs, great digestive herbs, and great neurological supporting herbs to help every aspect of that, that EPM horse. So if you do have an EPM horse, I'd go with EP minus at Valley Vet. Um, however, if you're just looking like a preventative uh, to help eliminate those protozoas out of the body, then that's when I would go with the, the herbal warmer. Okay. This is from Marsha. When you say six treatments in each um, equals 10 days, that's right. So there's 10 doses in a treatment. So that package has six treatments, 60 servings. Does it work against tapeworms? Yeah, we have really good success against all parasites because it's non, uh, it's not species specific and uh, the, the specific herbs that are, that are in there um, are, you know, make it unwelcoming for the parasite uh, to be in there. So half of that combination is focused on uh, making it non-hospitable, non-conducive for the parasite to, to be in the digestive tract. The other half of that combination is there to support your horse's digestive tract so it's healthier and uh, repairing any damage that those parasites might have um, had in the system. Um, do you have any um, products for other species of animals like dogs or goats or anything? Yeah, I can't say this on, on record, but if we're, we're for off record, um, we have lots of people that, that have used this um, on other, other species. Um, we do have a, a canine line at Silver Lining, um, but, uh, but yeah, no, it, it's, a, it's a great combination for, uh, for, for all animals. Okay. All right. Well, that's all the questions that we have. Um, <clears throat> some great questions today. Um, Chance, did you have anything else to add before we wrap up? Yeah, no, I mean, the biggest thing is, is like really consider like your horse and their perspective. You know, we think uh, as, as a, in a human perspective, but we really have to think on the horse's perspective, you know, where would they go to get, you know, what they need to, to support a healthier and happy life. You know, they're going to go out there and get different vegetation at different times of the year. And there's absolutely vegetation there that can help your horses in all aspects. Uh, and to this topic specifically to eliminate parasites out of their body, it's, it's been done for, for thousands of years with, with success. Um, and so it's important that we make sure that we're giving our horses what they need when they need it in the form that they need it and vegetation is absolutely the best uh, way to do that. We had a couple questions come in. Um, can it be given to a horse with Cushing's and that's on Prescend? Yeah, we don't have any issues with that. You know, we're an NASC member, National Animal Supplement Council member. We report all potential adverse events. We never had one to mix any of our products with any other pharmaceuticals or supplements. So I'd be really confident in that. We do have an alternative to the Prescend uh, Valley Vet does carry that. It's called pituitary support. Pituitary um, Cushing's, um, what was happening there is a malfunctioning pituitary gland. And, and so we just need to nourish that so it functions normally again. And again, there's key vegetation out there that can provide that to your horse. So that way um, they can resolve those issues. Can you go over the dosing for minis again? I know you said it was per pound. Yeah, so there's a tablespoon of scoop inside the herbal warmer package. That is the proper dosage for a thousand pound horse. But I just adjust that depending on what the weight would be. So if I have a mini that's 500 pounds, I'd do a half tablespoon per day, half scoop per day. If I had a 1500 pound horse, I'd be doing one and a half tablespoons per day or one and a half scoops per day. And uh, if your, your horse is 700 pounds or 1200 pounds, just adjust that accordingly. Um, don't have to get obsessed about having it exactly right. 
if you're if you're in the ballpark, uh, you'll see really effective results. And again, um, it's it's been proven safe that this this combination has been marketed for for 24 four years uh, as a brand of silver lining herbs. But um, actually, this product has been around for quite a bit longer than that um, with the founder of silver lining, Mickey Young, who designed this um, actually in the, the 80s and, and used it on, on thousands of horses over over the decade before actually launching the company of silver lining. Um, Jenny, I will post a link uh, once I get off of here to the products. Okay. And if you missed any part of this and you'd like to go back and watch, it will live on our um, Facebook page. So you can go back and watch the whole video. Um, we did have a comment from someone. Let's see. She says that you need to write a book, Chance, and she buy two of them. And... <laughs> All right, let's draw a winner. Okay. So today's winner, which is going to win this, um, is Christina Rosnor Kamka. <laughs> We're gonna say it as ever. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, Chance, we wanna thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate all the information, answering all these questions. And uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. All right. A couple of announcements oh, before yes. we let you go. All Hold right. on just a minute. We are coming down to the end of our giveaways. So if you're not entered, make sure you do the Positively Awesome giveaways going on. And it ends May 5th. So get entered in that. And we also have our Spray Master Spectacular giveaway still going on. And it ends May 12th. So get entered for both of those if you're not already. Okay. And um, we won't be live next week, but two weeks from now on May 10th, we will be live again. Um, if you're gearing up for a summer hog proj project, you will want to tune in on Wednesday, May 10th. We will be live with Weaver Livestock and Weaver Pro Kent Bennington will be joining us to discuss everything from skin, hair, and fitting your show pig this summer. So we'll see you in two weeks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Chance. Thanks.